I realized after I saved this movie, or was saving it, that I forgot to put in uh, the footnote discussion. I mean, since I was in the footnoting committee for the 2009 editions, you'd think you'd want to hear from me about my experience with footnotes for the church. Uh, 12B. Oh, 8B. I was looking at 8B. Alright, bitter pain in anguish. Alright, so there isn't... Well, no, it is. See, notice. Uh, 12B. The footnote for bridal. Uh, it's uh, TG. Priesthood. Huh? <laughs> Magnifying callings within? Huh? <laughs> what? <laughs> and then TG, self-mastery. What? <laughs> Maybe I can understand self-mastery, but I'm surprised they didn't put homosexuality in there. <laughs> but that's what I was called to do, was to uh, change these TGs into Guide to the Scriptures, GSs. But, uh, yeah, th this was the kind of thing that we would look for and say, oh, no, we need to get rid of that. And uh, I don't know from Guide to the Scriptures what would be used in that, pl in that place, but uh, I definitely would have just referred to Alma chapter 50. And because I'm putting this at the front of the video, because the video is 30 minutes, You'll understand when you listen to the rest of the video. <laughs> Travis Wayne Goodsell. It's another day, another morning, another nightmare because the church is not shut down. Travis Wayne Goodsell, born and raised Mormon, going on 50 years. So I know, as my testimony, that the church is false. Uh, this video is about bridling your passions. All Mormons believe that this only refers to the law of chastity. And I'm here to tell you it's wrong. There's only one instance in all of Scripture where we are, uh, well, the story character is given the commandment to bridle their passions. Alma 38, verse 12. <coughs> and uh, it's Alma to his son, because he says in 15, my son, farewell. He says in verse 12, use boldness, but not overbearance. So why heard about that in my mission field because this scripture with bridle your passions was used and so missionaries didn't want to talk about passions in the sense of what goes on down there they instead said oh boldness all for bad. we'll talk about that and then we'll quote the scripture so that the other part gets thrown in also and see also and also see that ye bridle all your passions then you may be filled with love. I thought love was unbridling your passions. <laughs> Again, if you know no if you don't know Greek, <laughs> you don't understand the joke. See that you refrain from idleness. Used as laziness rather than idol worship. Then he goes on to Say, do not pray as the Zoramites do, Mormons. But uh, passions, what does that mean? See, when our current society uses the word passion or passionate, our passions, we don't think of the 1800 definition of the word. Because there's other places 
in the Book of Mormon even, that uses the word passionate. Passionate. Whoops. Okay, not passionate. Uh, passion. Um, just looks like passion and passions. Alright, so let's go into the Book of Mormon. See? It's uh, found in Alma 50, verse 30. The others are in the New Testament. Uh, and behold, they would have carried this plan into effect, which would have been a cause to have been lamented. So this is dealing with the army of Moroni, dealing with Morianton. But behold, Morianton, being a man of much passion. So it must be sex, right? He's a very sexual being. Pay attention. Therefore he was angry. <gasps> what? <laughs> so there you have it. With one of his maidservants. And he fell upon her and beat her much. Shall we go back to the other Alma? Bridle your passions? Use boldness, but not overbearance. Do you see what's going on there? Boldness, but not overbearance. Therefore he was angry and beat her. Wouldn't you say that beating somebody because of your anger is overbearance? Exactly. So when he's saying here, use boldness but not overbearance, and also see that you bridle all your passions. He's not talking about sexual behavior, Mormons. Oops! And Boyd K. Packer should have known better since he graduated from high school. Didn't he go on to get other degrees too? Or was he just a Mormon for life? And so, yes, now that I've exposed the con of Mormonism, now it's time to rip it to shreds and cut it by its jugular. If you saw the, well, you saw already the picture I put at the front of the video. I have it on there for me to remember to have it for you <laughs> so that I can just put this video after it that uh, the bridle is for horses to domesticate them to control them now do I need to go yes I do and talk about Lucifer's plan of happiness what is Lucifer's plan of happiness control dominion unrighteous dominion and uh, taking away agency, putting people into bondage and slavery into obedience. That's similar to the use of a bridle. And of course you've got the animal activists who, who insist that domesticating horses is an evil thing to do. <laughs> but it's worse when you talk about humans in such a manner because it's used for horses he's referring to letting your anger get out of control to the point of beating someone because of your anger rather than having a reasoned discussion when you use a term that's used for animals for a human you are abusing that human you're not bridling your passions because you are now uh, referring to a human as subhuman you're referring to them as an animal now the song just a couple animals <laughs> is fun to listen to but that's a different, that's referring back to sex. <laughs> uh, 
And it's inappropriate, even in that case, to call us animals when we're doing what naturally comes to our bodies. Just like if we eat on a regular basis, you guys are animals for eating! Do you know what I mean? It's something we have to do in order to survive. So to refer to us as subhuman, just for eating, sleeping, going to the bathroom, and sex, is abusive speech. Then, if we were to apply bridling your passions to the current Mormon definition, which I've just destroyed, calling it Luciferian Doctrine in the title. Notice in the picture, we are the horses. If we're commanded to bridle our passions, we are the horses. Because we can't disassociate our sexual urge from us as a human. We can't disassociate it. Because if you understand why a bridle is put on, the horse can't put it on itself. Did you catch that? A horse cannot bridle its own passions. It cannot bridle itself. A human rider bridles the horse. And so, what exactly are the prophet, well, Packer, specifically, is the one who pushed it and forced it on the missionaries from there on out. That was back in, what was it, 1994? The April conference, it looks like. 2015? Uh, that was done long before then. Because I've got all these other guys from the 70s who are talking about it. Here's Nelson doing it. The physical temptation. See, when you marry. See? Automatically false doctrine. And he's now the president of the church. He doesn't even know the doctrine. And again, another by Nelson. 1 in 85, 1 in 89. Here's Benson. <laughs> and again, Benson in 83. <laughs> and it looks like another 70 in that one. So, yes, this was gone, this was out for a long time now. <coughs> so, who are the prophets telling us to be? Are we to be the horse to bridle ourselves, which we can't do? Or are we the rider of the horse? And that somehow we have to bridle ourselves as the horse. Because that's a trinity concept, Mormons. That's how Christians define their God as the trinity. That they're of the same substance, but they're separate. But it's supernatural, so it's not natural. So we can't understand and comprehend God, but we comprehend and understand God and that we can't understand and comprehend God. Do you understand? <laughs> so, that's what they're doing to us when they say this. Because this is just pure Luciferian doctrine. Lies and falsehoods to control and dominate over those who you are trying to dominate unrighteously. And, uh, and so, I hope by showing you that it's an incorrect definition of passion, that all of you will now go, oh, oh. <laughs> and so I don't have to keep trying to explain in different ways of how wrong this has been in the church for decades. See, this is why what happens when you don't study your scriptures. You're not supposed to read. 
You're not supposed to just study in the sense of, oh, okay, I memorized, therefore I know the passage. I know the story. I memorized the story. No, that's not study. That's a brainwashing technique. Did you know that? Did you listen to my other video the other day? <laughs> brainwashing about memorization. Selective memorization. That's a brainwashing technique. That's what they're doing to you in the school system in America and in Utah. They are forcing us to memorize selected materials from the various courses. Now math is a good thing to memorize to a certain point <laughs> depending on the career field you go into. Uh, but uh, history, there's too much history for one person to know all of history and have all of it memorized. Uh, there's just too many millennia of history to go through. And so school systems select from history what we're supposed to memorize. Instead, if they would design a system where, okay, in your youth, you know, like up to sixth grade, you are given a wide experience of what's out there in the world to do. Uh, and as a child, I remember watching the cartoon Popeye and wanting to be a sailor because of watching Popeye. And then I would watch a policeman show and want to be a policeman. When I watched Magnum P.I., I wanted to be a private investigator. So if we could expose children to a whole bunch of stuff right from the beginning of things that they might look for to be interested in, then, starting in the seventh grade, the child should have a pretty good idea of what they want to pursue as an educational field because you can't learn every single field and then the child would then learn what they what is necessary for the career field of their choice and of course my economy you don't need a career you don't get paid in my system you just get whatever you need and contribute to the distribution center but anyway, so uh, um, there you go, Mormons. Another trap because you failed to study your own Book of Mormon. Because these are this Book of Mormon. <laughs> and I'm talking to Mormons, and uh, oops, there it is. And so again, the topic of sex in regards to Mormonism is a hot topic. Uh, apparently I can't just put sex in my titles. I don't get enough views from that. I have to put porn. <laughs> but again, you need to understand how our bodies function. And uh, if you understand, uh, Trump calls this woman horse face. I think it's because she must have done some movie about horses. <laughs> Just my guess. But uh, Stormy Daniels, that's not her real name, but you'll remember she, uh, she and Trump hit the news uh, not too long ago as the, her lawyer is now in prison. <laughs> but uh, uh, she's a she's uh, she's not a prostitute but she has sex for money doing movies uh, and so she knows male behavior male sexual behavior because she's had sex with lots of different men she knows how men behave and respond and so when she talks about her experience meeting Trump and uh, they're exchanging banter, sexual banter back and forth in the restaurant and slaps him with the, the magazine with his family photos, family photo on the cover and then goes up to his, his, his apartment and then all of a sudden he makes his move and in her mind she says that uh oh 
and uh, and she knew she couldn't claim rape because she had gone along with it and given consent to Trump even though she didn't verbally give consent her behavior towards him with the sexual banter and the going up to his apartment was consent but she wanted people to understand that that's the kind of person that Trump was and uh, uh, and had to throw in the little mushroom thing also because of Trump's abuse towards her during that whole scandal process uh, but uh, <coughs> Both men and women need to understand each other's bodies and how it functions, how it works, and in so doing, we can make sure that we don't put ourselves into a situation where we can't stop. Uh, because uh, uh, having been through my first marriage, uh, it's difficult to stop when even your wife who gave consent with the marriage because you can get an annulment if the wife after marriage refuses <laughs> because the law understands this that marriage is consent but again not to the point of beating your wife because she has a headache although it does cure headaches and men have caught on to that now <laughs> so women have to look for other excuses to refuse but again why are you refusing why are, but uh, there, there needs to be education and it's not being given and it's causing lots of problems and the church leaders are using that lack of education to exploit and and take advantage of Mormons because passions as used in the Book of Mormon is given the definition in Alma chapter 50 verse 30 refers to anger to the point of beating someone physical violence and so if you've been paying attention in the news remember the homophobic uh, threat uh, to BYU students who are gay there's a group of Mormon men who are threatening to come to BYU and beat the hell out of gays they're not bridling their passions there was also the 64 Mormons who ganged up on one of their own a Mormon missionary from out of state out of country even who was called to serve in the Utah mission can't remember which county it was but uh, because he was black the 64 Mormons even though he was Mormon they still beat the hell out of him and then I saw on ABC 4 News the other day that there was another man who uh, used violence as part of a hate crime. Mormons are not bridling their passions. And even with the incorrect definition of passion, that's also a serious problem in Utah as well, as rapes cannot be processed quick enough they were already backlogged in the first place but they can't keep up with the new stuff that's coming in and the child rapes by bishops and primary teachers and scout leaders and yes the 8,000 Boy Scouts from mostly Mormons raped by Mormon scout leaders as the church says see you Boy Scouts have fun dealing with it on your own and then the Boy Scouts say, oh, we have to declare bankruptcy. We don't have the church's money anymore. We can't afford to pay all these boys now because we lost our income. When will people wake up? When will Mormons wake up 
and realize that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is false. They're false prophets. By their fruits ye shall know them. This is how it works. We will liken the word unto a seed. The word is the seed. What's the fruits? It's the physical manifestation of the word. So when uh, Packer, Benson, Nelson talk about bridling your passions in reference to sex, we now can see the fruits as being false. Therefore, all those prophets are false. That's how simple it is. That's what we were supposed to do, Mormons. Use the Book of Mormon as the standard measurement for the Mormon prophets. But then Benson comes along as an apostle and speaks at BYU talking about the uh, 14, 17, 11, whatever number of, of, of conditions of a prophet of God. Yeah, no, false. <laughs> Again, compare it with the Book of Mormon. In that listing he gives, he says, the current prophet is more important than the Book of Mormon and more important than the words of Jesus. Did any of you catch that? No, you didn't. You just used it as an excuse to get away with whatever you want until the prophet comes down and says you can't do that and then you just say well I'll just wait until the next prophet and wait for him to then say it. <laughs> My god. <laughs> Alright. So going to be a wild and crazy day. Uh, as an update, since I'm not going to do a video update of this, the lawsuit I have against the church, I've, I'm, I'm checking out other ways to get this lawsuit finished and going at least. And I think I may have found a way that doesn't cost me anything <laughs> or too much. I still have to... Uh, anyway. So, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, once my case gets known, <laughs> if all hell is going to break loose. You thought the hundred billion scandal in tithing was a big deal? You thought Gaddy versus COP was a big deal? You thought the... 32 billion that was reported by Fox 13 News's Max Roth in May of uh, 2018 <laughs> was a big deal. You didn't even know about that, did you? Or the the 40 billion that was reported uh, in regards to uh, the investments at Enzyme Peak, not the other investments they have, just at Enzyme Peak. <laughs> And watch my videos. Uh, mine will shake evil to its core. And uh, I mean, it's just going to be shocking for the world to find out what the church has done to me. Just me alone. And so, uh, yeah, the church has nowhere to run other than a non-extradition company and taking their trillions with them. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking into that and uh, uh, tomorrow as people go back to work uh, I'll be getting answers to emails and questions and searches and other stuff that I'm working on. But we will bring down this church to its knees and then, well, it should do the honorable thing and kill itself. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Is it Japanese or Chinese? I think it's Jap. Well, no, it's Japanese uh, because of uh, uh, the Tom Cruise movie uh, as he was in 
uh, Japan uh, Japanese samurai. I think it's Chinese samurai. Or is it? I'm pretty sure it was Jap Japan. Hmm. Oh well, whatever. Whatever that cultural tradition is, where it's the respectful, honorable thing to kill yourself. <laughs> And the reason why I'm thinking about that is uh, because of Blacklist. There was an episode not too long ago that I saw that involved that. <laughs> so have hope. Pray to whichever god you pray to. <laughs> it's not the Mormon god. And uh, we'll get this done.